Okay, welcome everybody and good morning. Um, it's my pleasure to be kicking off uh, the strategy stream. And, and today we have a very exciting speaker, Rosemary Missier, who is the product manager um, at Zero, And she will be speaking to you about the confessions of a product geek. Um, a quick note about myself, I am a uh, UNZ Lin, a partner in um, uh, cloud and platform engineering at Deloitte. And um, it's, I'm personally very product driven and I'm really excited to hear about Rosemary's story um, about the product uh, within Zero as well. So with that, um, over to Rosemary uh, for the next 30 minutes. Thank you, Yuan, for that introduction. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Rosemary. I work in the product space in uh, Zero, uh, based out of uh, Melbourne. Um, been working with um, APIs. It actually goes back to my days in uh, as a software engineer, uh, working for various um, industries, uh, different domains, and for clients based in, the, in India, US, and um, Australia. So today, I am going to share with you all my learnings um, that I've had based on the experiences of working on APIs for in different countries, uh, different industries, different domains, and um, come across a lot of um, myths and anti-patterns um, being an engineer myself. And I, I think I would like to highlight that today's talk would help all of you who are trying to uh, venture out into the API space, trying to write your first endpoint, uh, you might find value uh, in all the learnings that I had when I wrote my first endpoint, and I've now moved into the product space where I'm also trying to bring out the product aspect. So a little bit about me. Um, I've been working as an engineer, moved into research, been teaching. I then ended up working in startups where I, that's where I got exposed to working uh, in the design space, engineering space, product space, and uh, mainly in APIs. Um, and now in the last few years, um, I have been focusing uh, on various integrations, um, primarily um, venturing out into that API product space. So today to uh, dive a little bit deeper, um, I have, uh, I'm going to talk about um, API as a product, the process behind driving uh, API development, and also the design aspect. So in short, um, I am trying to ensure that we have that product mindset, but we've got to wear different hats. And that's that's what exactly what I'll be talking about today, various myths and anti-patterns. Let me uh, start off. The first anti-pattern, APIs are an afterthought. Um, what do I mean uh, when I say afterthought? See, um, for all these decades, we've been um, working in a very traditional uh, environment. So traditional business model where we think of APIs as only a part of the application development process. What do I mean when I say part of the application development process? You're looking at building a capability, you're looking at a feature, you're looking at uh, some sort of an initiative which is bridging a gap or, you know, uh, fulfilling some sort of, a, um, um, say, a capability, right? So that's when you're looking at API as a solution. So you, it's only when you start uh, developing that you look at APIs as a solution. And that's what exactly when I say part of application development process. This is very different to um, API-focused companies where their main source of income is the main source of revenue is via API. So I'm talking about companies like Twilio and Stripe. Whereas this is um, various different places that I've worked in where I've looked at APIs um, where you're serving an internal team. So you're coming up with a new application where you're trying to see whether you can expose data to another team, which is internal to your organization. That's an internal API. Or you already have an established relationship with a partner and you're trying to solve a use case for your mutual customers. That's when you have a partner API, which is kind of a hybrid between internal and public APIs. So all that I'm trying to get to is look at your data itself. You might want to tap into your 
um, data, you might want to monetize the, your data at a later stage, right? So everything has to be looked at from um, the data aspect as well, which often is overlooked until we have a use case. So that mindset has to change, okay? So tap into your data potential, look at various different aspects as to who these APIs are going to uh, solve problems for, whether it be internal, partner, external, look at it from a different aspect. That's where you've got to start rethinking your strategy and have an API enabled strategy. So it does then doesn't become an afterthought. Okay. Now I am to give you an actually an example of this. Um, I worked on a project in my previous organization where um, it was there was a core offering which is also exposed as an API, and this core offering actually had a, a, a whole suite of products. Okay, all very tightly coupled. And um, we were trying to actually solve a particular use case where one of the offshoot product which I was owning, um, we had to expose some data uh, via an endpoint and it eventually belonged to this core offerings API product. Now, in hindsight, we started adding to this API by having more endpoints for this or one of the offshoot products. This was not ideal or it was not a good solution because why? Going into the architecture side, this was a very tightly coupled product, which is almost like a monolith. And we had to start you know, thinking of changing this architecture, maybe moving into microservices. And we had to now start rethinking our strategy at that point in time. You do not want to start adding um, endpoints into an existing API, which is also already a tightly coupled product. That's an afterthought, example of an afterthought, because you've got to first think now, Long term is this viable. So you need to start rethinking your strategy and that's where we changed it and we said, okay, first point to note is this product needs to be decoupled from the core offering. So that's point number one. Once that's done, you might also want to think of having the second offshore product as an API by itself. So an API as a product, not as part of application development process. Okay, so APIs are your first class citizens. Start thinking whether API should be a product or should be a solution. I, and that would actually uh, drawing from the previous one. So when I say technical solutions, I gave you the product aspect, but I also want to ensure that from um, the engineering uh, aspect as well. Most often I've seen uh, my teams always looking at it as technical solutions because they solve a particular problem. Um, and as I, I, as I mentioned, they are very tightly coupled to a particular use case, right? So that's not ideal. You might want to rethink whether the, it should be that because it's not just solving a problem, but I've also seen developers thinking of it as technical solutions simply because there isn't a UI. API docs is a different UI, but when we are talking about user facing, we look at APIs as a completely different solution. Now, when I say rally use, I want you to think of it from this aspect. Um, we all know that APIs are going to help us to build those strategic partnerships. And I'm going to give you an example of where we fell behind. So a few years ago, we entered into a strategic partnership with a particular company uh, which had a global base. And uh, we wanted to actually step into a new market. And um, we thought it was a good deal. We already had established relationship with a good user base in a local market. And we were looking, leaning on this new partnership to actually venture out or uh, try out a new market. So in, in order to keep the comms and the, uh, you know, the relationship going, eventually what happened, we started looking at building solutions even for the local market as endpoints, as APIs, and trying to you know, uh, ensure that we keep our local market, local users also happy. With a long-term vision that we might be successful in a new market, right? So that's talking about maintaining your strategic partners, uh, partnerships in a good, in a, in a very healthy manner, right? But eventually what happened, we really didn't kick off because this company whom we were working with actually didn't have wasn't able to actually have a stable user base. So we saw that dropping and it eventually what happened, we were not able to also um, establish a firm footing. 
And what happened with all these endpoints and APIs that we ended up building, they were all shuttered for low adoption because they were rarely used. We really didn't give thought to um, where we were heading because as much as we had a long-term vision towards a new market, we also felt looking at the long-term vision in another market, we failed to understand whether we were doing taking making the right move um, in a different market which where we were already established. So that's an example where APIs do open up new business channels, but you've also got to think of various different aspects of it, right? You are not looking at tech, providing technical solutions in one market versus looking at an API product in a new market because it's going to bring you new, uh, more revenue. Look at it from all aspects, different regions, long-term vision, short-term vision, where are you compromising, okay? At the end of the day, yes, you are going to, your business needs are def definitely driven by your developer, but you've also got to look at how is it helping your organization to get to becoming a platform that it should be. Okay, the next myth is um, API development cannot be um, agile. Now, I must say often, most of my teams that I've worked uh, with overseas as well as here, I've noticed that we do have a very uh, waterfall, scrum fall type of an approach. What, what do I mean when I say that? We go through this, you know, requirements where we talk with our, our developer, we get the requirements and we go through the design phase, we build it and then we test it, we release the documentation. That's, that's definitely not uh, the right way to um, build especially if you want to have this API product mindset. You've got to start thinking on your feet. You've got to be um, um, agile as well, right? You need to have that uh, uh, collective ownership, right? So where do you start? When I say we need to have an API first approach, all that I'm trying to say is start thinking of how agile you can be even when you're trying to get your requirements, right? So get, um, get your developers in a room, get those requirements, come and spin up a contract with them pretty quickly. Do not wait for you know um, a full-fledged uh, whole life cycle to be complete before we get those docs out. Get them involved um, earlier because innovation demands agility, right? So be more iterative, work very closely with your stakeholders, collaboratively design with them, make use of all the tools, maybe start having those conversations as to how do you want to test, talk about sandboxes. You've got um, tools like Open API Swagger, everything, make use of those tools as well, which will help you to actually become more uh, agile. Get those contracts defined early so that you can test it out, right? So it, agile mindset is something that can be still done when you are looking at APIs. This is interesting. Um, AIs and APIs are not uh, complementary. Now, do not rule out the fact that API cannot be used. You might be aware, you might be totally new in this world of APIs. You are probably taking your first step forward in the world of APIs, but you've also got to think that you will reach a point in time where you might want to leverage off all these capabilities that are being provided by MLAI, right? But where do we start? Because it's a buzzword. We shouldn't be just looking at, you know, bringing in artificial intelligence into this. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples where uh, uh, we spoke about having um, uh, AI. So one is API usage monitoring. So I'm going to give you an example here. When you work with the FinTech space or any compliance industry, um, you have a very uh, rigorous security process that you need to go through in terms of who you want to work with. When I say who you want to work with, you want to be very careful with who you choose as your app partner, right? You might have various regulatory bodies giving you uh, requirements to say that you could sign a deal only with such and such a type of a partner, as if, if at all they adhere to certain criteria, right? So you have the security assessment that needs to be done or a legal assessment that needs to be done. And if all those conditions are met, then you enter into a partnership with this a partner, right? And so when you do that, as um, from, uh, from experience, I'll tell you, whether it be your um, sales, marketing, and product engineering, we go through uh, 
assessing this ad partner, going through their profile, trying to understand how these APIs are being used, what are the number of calls, we start profiling that. And we do that in the initial days. And we sign off and we go about our development and our maintenance phase. But what happens later on? We start looking at the traffic and we notice a difference. So let's say they've told you that you, we are going to have, uh, say for example, 100 calls um, for every 10 milliseconds, right? But you'd see this number bloat after about a year um, of being in production. And you might start wondering, is this expected? Is it legal? Is, it, is there a valid use case? Or is there something else which is fishy about uh, these API calls? And that's when we started looking at, okay, we need to start profiling, right? We never do this continual assessment. And that's exactly what you need to do if you are looking at compliance. You need to start profiling your APIs. Next, you start profiling your apps. And that's exactly where artificial intelligence comes in. So this is a very manual process that we used to do where sales and marketing will go and check to see what's changed with these various app partners. Are, are they, do they need to have so many um, calls per minute? Um, has their business model changed? All manual, but you can do this with artificial intelligence. Start understanding what those patterns are. Start profiling your apps based on the categories. You might see that apps of a certain category um, might actually have a legitimate reason to have this amount of traffic, right? So I've given an example of unsupervised learning where you, use, you could use clustering to understand that pattern recognition. But that's exactly something you could do to understand your usage of various different app partners. The next case that I'm going to give you is security testing. As much as we might have, you know, um, session management, gateways, walks, um, everything possible, um, you have to understand as much as there are tools in place, manual testing in place, there is a chance for things to go wrong, right? So that's where we have today um, tools like Ping Intelligence helping you to actually have um, use AI to monitor how your traffic is work, how your traffic is looking like, right? You might want to have like um, decoy APIs trying to understand what, what is this traffic. Um, so use that because you need to know whether uh, this usage pattern that you're seeing for an API is normal or is it is it that the hacker has somehow figured out a way of getting in, right? You wouldn't know this. So use those tools as well, which are available, right? But that being said, have AI as a part of your strategy too. But when you start off or when you are stepping into uh, writing that first endpoint, keep in mind that you can't wait for a time where you'll have all this in place, but your strategy has to have a spot for AI as well. Now, APIs are not user-centric. And I think I touched on this a little uh, earlier. We need to keep in mind that we talk about UCD, we hit CD, we use all the terms. We have a lot of empathy, but one key point that we all miss out, um, especially new developers, um, I've noticed that we don't think of our app developers as also users, right? So we need to think about that developer experience and how do we do that, right? So you might be working on an internal um, API, right? So you might just go, have, a, have no process, Right, just have a proof of concept, write your own client. Or what I would do suggest is sometimes when we have an internal team, we actually don't even give them documentation, right? We just see them actually uh, try and build it themselves to see what, what is it, that's the best feedback that you can get, right? But obviously you will get to a stage where after that user testing, you will want to then write full-fledged documents. But that's a cheap way, low cost method of, you know, um, having, um, a very collaborative environment and not leaving your developers uh, in the dark. But it's a totally different game if you're looking at, you know, hybrid APIs, public APIs, and you've got the money to invest, then you might want to look at how you can collaboratively design. So use, use various, and all of us are working remotely, ensure that you have different channels of communication, whatever be it for you, whatever tool you're using, ensure that you have that shared collaboration with your developers. Start building together start getting them to actually um, get involved in the day-to-day -day, uh, chats that you have. You have your scrum meetings, include them as well, right? So the quickest will always be start soon, 
prototype, get them to test, validate, and keep repeating this. So that's going back to a talk of agile as well. So when you're agile, you are getting the user involved. And in this case, the user is your developer. It's only when you've got past this early days and you've increased uh, the number of, you've, ex, you've like extended it to various app developers, that's when you start thinking of a more formal process like portals, uh, explorers, web, and that's, that's totally different. Okay, so, but you can do it to a small scale, even when you are starting out. You need to start having the empathy towards your developers. APIs are cruddy. This is probably something that I have always noticed. We always think of only REST APIs, so we look at only CRUD. But that's changing because you've got to really think beyond CRUD, beyond REST, right? We always thought REST was going to be replacing SOAP. That's changed. Now we think gRPC would. No, we do not know. Everything has has a reason, right? You have GraphQL for a particular reason. You have async. You have events uh, like you have, you want to have a pub sub model, even driven man. So many different types of um, architectures that you can make use of, right? So think of um, where, what is the product that you are trying to build? For whom are you building? When I say device APIs, you might be doing something for your Fitbit, right? So most developers who are starting. Um, I'm not even talking about people who are using low code, no code type of development, but people who are just writing their first APIs always think everything is rest, everything is crud. That mindset has to change. APIs are black boxes. You probably will guess this. Um, we all know that we do not know uh, your end, end, your developer will not actually know what is the functionality, what is happening, and that's that's fine, right? But you as someone who is providing services you need to know what's going on and i've often noticed that with various engineering teams we do not log data we do not log enough and when i say enough we do not log the right information right so the typical example that i'll give you is that this often happens uh, is always have a 5xx server errors right but you want to look at all your different response codes as First time developers writing APIs, please look at the different HTTP response codes that you could have. Give more meaningful messages because that's going to be uh, very rich when it comes to solving problems. Okay, when you're talking about um, retries, um, when you're talking about network congestion, please keep in mind, now if I give you an example when I've spoken about back off algorithm for retries, you might use all the algorithms that are available to you, but that's not always the case. In the, in the space of compliance as well, we often get told what exactly we should be doing in terms of retries, what we should do. So that, be open. Uh, you can't go by the textbook. Um, you've got to work with different regulatory bodies. You've got to work with your API consumers and then try and understand. So make everything available. And especially in the FinTech industry, you've got to ensure that there might come a time where you might be audited. And this information that you log is super rich data. Right. So ensure that you have anything uh, and everything logged, because there might be a time you are not in the organization. Uh, the people in the organization might need to know this information in case there's a breach, and you've got to do, um, you've got to be diligent. Right. So ensure that everything is tracked. The next is finally, I've also mentioned docs as the UI because you want to ensure that that is ultimately the UI that your developers are looking at. So what you say should be visible too. So ensure you're on the same page and ultimately whether it is you're using all your API management tools to have documentation or whether it be just a Word doc, ensure that you have the documents well in place. Finally, APIs cannot be hacked. I'm going to rush a little bit here. We need to know that we always talk about OAuth 2 and TLS being secure enough. Um, flaw, fundamental flaw. As much as we know they are good enough, but they are they are they sufficient is a question that you need to ask depending on the domain and the industry you're working in. And why I say multi-layered is we have the OSI model. You can literally look at having security implemented in almost most layers of the OSI model, right? So ensure that you look through all the different layers to see whether it is secure enough. You might want to just have um, not just your data, but that might be another on the network side, on the on the physical side. That might be something else that you would want to secure, 
right? So you that's where you've got to look at also AI as well. Like be pretty choosy about who you um, pick and sh um, who you want to uh, enter into a partnership with, right? So um, once again, to touch on compliance and fintech, you've got to be choosy because you have various regulatory bodies. You've got to, data is extremely sensitive. You've got to be careful with all the PII. So do a security check now and then. One key point I would want to bring out here is always security teams. If you have one in your organization, they're always looped in right at the very end. That's a fundamental problem. You've got to ensure that your stakeholders are there in the early discussions, and that includes your security team. And if you do not have one, please have the mindset that you trust no one and wear that security hat. Get your team, get your engineers, or if you have an architect, please wear that security hat on to ensure that you build very safe and secure APIs. I'd like to end with that. Thank you. And feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn and I'm more than happy to take questions as well. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, I think that I personally really resonated with that talk around being sort of product centric and API first. Um, I think one of the questions is really around, I think you talked a lot about the sort of educating the developers to think about being product centric versus being a technical solution. But I think um, how, how about the business owners as well? Sometimes the product owners also need to think about being API centric and, and being technical solution focused. Do you have any guidance and advice for us um, in talking to the business and educating the business on kind of becoming API first as well? Yep. So it starts from the uh, right on the top. So I'm not saying it's top down, but when your company is setting, uh, you know, you're creating your vision where you want to become a platform, uh, that's something that the organization needs to understand, right? So often we say we want to be a platform, we want to be API, we want to have a strategy that uh, is API enabled, but we don't dive deeper into understanding what we exactly mean by that. What is it that we're trying to achieve? So what I would suggest is whether it be from your um, executive leadership team, ensure that you have those sessions, your workshops, where you're trying to figure out and define exactly what you want when you say you want to have an API-enabled strategy, you want to become a platform. So it starts from the top, and then obviously it goes further down. So those frequent discussions and then breaking that down into your roadmap, um, whether it be quarterly or yearly or the three-year long-term vision, hmm. you would want to ensure that you keep revisiting that thought and vision at every stage. So you know that it, when it comes down to your product team as well, your product owners, your product managers, your business analysts, everybody has that. So if you have established that um, idea that where you want to go in terms of API and what APIs mean, if bringing that idea down into your engineering team would become much more simpler. We ultimately, we want to bridge that gap, right? We do not mm -hmm. want the product and engineering divide. We do not want the business yes. and product divide. We want all of us to have that same thinking. So it has to start right from the top. We mm -hmm. ensure that we are all on the same page. And that happens mainly with collaboration at different levels and cross-collaboration. Sounds good. It sounds very much a like top-down, bottom-up, bridge of gaps. Thank you it's for that. Um, I think one of the really good points you made around the sort of AI and API sort of coming together, I mean, they, they are two of the sort of hottest topics right now. Um, do you have any guidance uh, for companies out there who are less mature in the AI front? Um, where, where should they really start? Uh, what, what's the first step? So I think I can go, go with my experience in my mm. previous places that I, I worked for. When we started, we never really thought about it. Um, that was that's how we, uh, we we figured out that okay we just need to get out we need to have those partnerships and that's a fundamental mistake now that ai is kicking in we really have to start looking at it from the strategy so look at if you ask me fundamental is start looking at security tools because that's exactly where you need to uh, focus right mm -hmm. now right you want to look at your monitoring and usage look at what's available learn from what others have done uh, have it as a part of your strategy for your long term rather than just mm -hmm. short term so that you work and you inch forward towards that final goal sounds good starting with the security is always a very safe bet whether it's ai or api well i think with that we're out of time and um some really good topics and some really good anti-patterns and how to go forward and thank you for your time rosemary and um, really enjoyed the session 
Thank you, Anne, and thank you, everyone.